Insignia. You may have heard of this brand before. It is the brand of an American electronics company called Best Buy. It looks like they designed quite a few of their own power adapters and power banks. I have a whole lot of 35 watt and under power adapters to check out in this video. They may have clones in other markets, so let me know if any look familiar. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. Performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, let's get these power adapters opened up and see what's inside. It looks like we get two basic forms of packing with Insignia. The older style is a plastic bag and essentially a loose adapter in a box. The more modern style adds even more waste with the plastic tray. Magnets, but it has a door. Hopefully, it isn't a door to sadness. The adapters do come with a little FCC card, but not much else on the bagged style adapter. The newer styles do come with a rather confusing and elaborate document describing a state of confusion, if you ask me. I think I like how everyone else does this better. Some adapters come with a USB-C to lightning cable, which will certainly be getting tested in the USB cables round four. These adapters use cardboard to hold things in place. The adapters are all a little different. We'll take a closer look at them as we go through the video, but here are just a few quick looks at some of them. The adapters split the safety listings between UL and TUV Rhineland. Some of the adapters have the six mark on them, which means they should meet the Department of Energy six level efficiency and the idle power requirements. This basically is a set of goals to reduce the idle power consumption and increase the real power efficiency. It doesn't look at any of the other power parameters like power factor, but I'll talk about that later as usual. Here are the weights for these adapters. Basically, these adapters ended up being a little heavier than some of the competition in similar power level ranges, but it is really not a huge amount different. In some cases, the packaging weighed more than the adapter though. In general, these are a smaller fare adapters, so they're on the light and compact side of things. Since I'm gonna go through a lot of adapters in this video, I'm just gonna break this into a bunch of mini segments covering each product. Starting with the five watt adapter, which is a nice small adapter. The USB-A port is only 5 volt capable, so nice and simple, slow charging. It has a UL safety listing and costs around 5 US dollars, which isn't terrible. The adapter safety overloaded at 6.5 watts and recovered to the 5 volts after removal of the overload. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter isn't amazing, but being only a 5 watt adapter, power expectations are not too high. The efficiency of the adapter put it out of tolerance with the DOE 6 requirements. The 12 watt adapter is a step up from the 5 watt. The USB-A port is only 5 volt capable, so also nice, slow, simple charging. It has a UL safety listing and costs around 6 US dollars, which isn't terrible. The safety overload happened at 13.5 watts and recovered to 5 volts after the removal of the overload. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is also low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter isn't amazing and 12 volt power supply expectations are higher and this doesn't meet the mark. The efficiency of this adapter put it out of tolerance with the DOE 6 requirements by an even higher margin than the 5 watt adapter, so not great. The 18 watt adapter starts to get a little more technical in terms of modes of operation. The USB-C port is 5 volt and 9 volt capable, so this can charge most phones at a moderate pace, but won't charge some tablets and no laptops. This uses the USB power delivery 3.0 specification to increase the voltage to more efficiently charge connected devices. It has a TUV safety listing and costs around 9 US dollars which is reasonable. The adapter safely overloaded at 21 watts and recovered to 5 volts after removal of the overload. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter is also not great. At 18 watts, this should be able to put together a stronger performance. The efficiency of this adapter is intolerance with the DOE 6 requirements, so at least it isn't failing the claims. The 20 watt adapter shares similar modes of operation to the 18 watt, but with a little more current. The USB-C port is 5V and 9V capable, so this can charge most phones at a moderate pace but won't charge some tablets and no laptops. It has a TUV safety listing and costs around 13 US dollars, which is reasonable. The adapter safely overloaded at 26 watts and recovered to the 5 volts after removal of the overload. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is also low but noisy. I see a theme here. The general performance of this adapter is bad. It stands apart from other 20 watt adapters as noticeably worse than even the 18 watt adapter. This is the V30 series, so should be better, but is really worse. The efficiency of this adapter put it in tolerance with the DOE 6 requirements. The 30 watt dual port adapter shares similar modes of operation to the last two adapters, but with a little more current and two ports. 
The USB-C port is 5 volt and 9 volt capable, so this can charge most phones at a moderate pace, but again, no laptops and some tablets. The USB-A port is 5 volt only. It has a TUV safety listing and costs around 14 US dollars, also reasonable. The adapter safely overloaded at 21 watts and recovered to the 5 volts after removal of the overload. The adapter does have some port sharing and the two ports operate totally independently of each other, so no renegotiation issues. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is again low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter is also bad. It stands apart from other 30 watt adapters as noticeably worse. The efficiency of this adapter is out of tolerance of the DOE6 requirements by a tiny margin. The 30 watt adapter starts to have some light shine on it. The modes of operation expand greatly. The USB-C port can do 5, 9, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes and adds two PPS or programmable power supply modes of 11 and 16 volts to charge even more devices more efficiently. The device can deliver the full 30 watt in both PPS modes. With the higher voltage mode, this can charge tablets and even laptops. It is a TUV safety listing and costs around 21 US dollars, which is reasonable. The adapter safely overloaded at 34 watts and recovered to 5 volts after removal of the load. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter is reasonable. It stands apart from the other Insignia adapters as a better option, the best buy yet. The efficiency of this adapter put it in tolerance with the DOE6 requirements. Onto the 35 watt dual USB-C port adapter and that light from the 30 watt is gone. The modes of operation shrink, and the ports get really confused with renegotiating power delivery, sometimes doing nothing. The USB-C port can do 5, 9, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes. No PPS is supported. With two cables plugged in, this drops to 5 volts on one port and 5 or 9 volts on the second port. This is not great power sharing. I'd rather see 5 volts and keep all the modes on the other port. With the higher voltage mode, this can charge tablets or even laptops, but only on one port at a time. It has a TUV safety listing and costs around 35 US dollars, which is a bad buy. This adapter safely overloaded at 41 watts and recovered to the 5 watts after removal of the overload. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is low but noisy. The general performance of this adapter is bad. It doesn't hold up to the performance level expected of an adapter in this 35 watt range, so there are other options. Although, there are also worse options. The efficiency of this adapter put it in tolerance with the DOE6 requirements. As expected, none of these power adapters have power factor correction, which is a technique to consume the least AC current for the equivalent power level. This means less loss in the other components like wiring and transformers. Since none of these devices have power factor correction, we can expect them to have a little higher current use. The wave shape is also not so nice on any of these adapters. When comparing all these different power adapters, we see some similarities. None of them take care to clean up the idle power, so the idle scores are all zero, but the idle consumption was low enough to meet the DOE6 requirement. The range on operating scores is fairly broad though, covering dismal 73 all the way up to a respectable for a small adapter, PQS 89. The efficiency is pretty far from chart topping, and none of these adapters gave me the impression that they will be winning awards anytime soon. The 30 watt single port is the most recent reasonable of the bunch. Comparing to the other company's adapters is a little more difficult since there are so many tested now. So I'm going to use some page capture to take a look at the categories. The 5 watt category shows how much worse small adapters perform. The high scoring items are LED lights, so they don't count. The Sony 5 watt adapter looks like it's the best bet though, followed by an ancient Microsoft adapter for Zunes. Ha. Ah. Stepping up to 20 watts, Ugreen still tops this chart. This is one of the first power adapters I looked at, and I guess I started at a high point. For 30 watts, the Google adapter is probably the best bet, as the other options near it are a little less refined or lack safety listings. Insignia is pretty far down this list, but they did make the page at least. 35 watt adapters look like they are all terrible for one reason or another. The best one lacks a safety listing, and the most capable, the Apple, is bad at being a power adapter. These Insignia adapters may fit some requirements. They fall in line with the market competition and all have safety listings. The adapters aren't the most technologically advanced and the price point on the smaller adapters is quite compelling, but then the performance doesn't seem to be that great. The adapters have a bit of extra weight in them, but it looks like it isn't used to make the power electronics better, but more like thicker plastic. I am mildly disappointed that these aren't better, but at the same time, I'm also not surprised. These power adapters are the status quo and do exactly what they claim to do. Time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database. Search for Insignia on the PQS.app 
page and compare them all. Thanks for watching. Next week doesn't have a plan. I'll come up with something though, or leave some suggestions in the comments. I do have another round of lesser known 140 watt adapters. There is a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos, so check it out. I may have more of these adapters, but I think a lot are going to share the results of this video. At least one is not the worst thing ever. Thanks again, and bye.